Welcome back, folks. It is finally Great Plateau time. And you're probably going to notice right off the bat there's a lot that's changed. But I'm getting ahead of myself just to show you on the map where we're at and what we are doing. And you can actually get up here several ways. One way is you can shoot yourself out of the cannon like the circus. Or you could float gently down from the Great Sky Island. And there's quite a lot to the Great Plateau, guys. Lots of treasure, lots of chests, and... Not to mention Karak seeds. I think there's like more than 20 here. Speaking of the devil. So folks, that being said, it's probably going to be a longer video. So let's buckle up and get her done. Alright, there's a number of ways to do this Karak seed. I prefer the power of flight. Alright folks, for this one you're definitely going to need a little bit of runway space, so make sure you give yourself some room to take off. Alright, once we got Mr. I need to find my friend taken care of, guys, there's a cave right where we first emerged in the last game. And there's a bloopy out here. Alright, so you got some lootables out here. Now you got the leaves you can just simply walk through, you don't need to like burn them down or nothing. And they call it a Shrine of Resurrection. That's just carryover from the last game. There's actually no shrine in here. But there is a Schema Stone. And I think it's actually the only Schema Stone that is above ground, like not in the depths. Kind of funny, they gave us this bath here where the old bathtub used to be. Not a bad little fringe benefit. Alright, so speaking of Schema Stones... You got a nice big opened up room down here. Go ahead and try the bananas and you guessed it, Yiga. Not my most graceful fight, but I'll take it. And I guess that's TOTK's version of the motorcycle from the old game. Alright folks, so before we leave the cave here, there's a hidden treasure chest. And this really reminds me of the Yiga, Can the Yiga Clan hideout. Alright, really nothing else in here. Feel free to ascend. Alright, and while we're up here, there's a croc seed like right in front of me here. I thought I was going to catch that one from the air. I still can't help myself. I have to roll this boulder down. I already know it does nothing. But it does lead us to a Karak seed. There we go. So I'm gonna kind of somewhat sort of follow my route from BOTW, not really. Um, I'm just gonna kind of hit the key spots here as we go. And just like before, we got a croc seat atop the little mini mountain here. Mini Mount Everest. Alright, so do exactly north from here, we'll hit another seed. Right there atop the old wooden tree. You can even see the pinwheel already. And yes, bomb arrows are still my preferred method for blowing up the croc balloons. Alright, exactly north of here there should be a treasure chest. Right where it should be. Durability, huh? Alright, so from here, guys, we're gonna head east. And in BOTW, I really didn't hassle with this talus too much, but in this game, there's actually a chest that makes it worthwhile. And that would be a ruby. I can't see his face. Tulin sneezes, like, right in the way. And there 
there it is. Alright, so heading east a little bit further, we'll come to the pond. And guys, there are free lootables in the forest here. You know, I'm not going to take my time here and pick every mushroom, but, um, you know, there are random things like that throughout. Turn on your ultra hand, and that really helps light that stuff up too, by the way. Not to mention fireflies. Nice. All right, so here's our Karak seed. All right, with that, moving on further east, we will come to our shrine. Ah, I totally forgot about the gloom hands that was here. Let's see if he auto-dies. If he doesn't auto-die, I'll kill it. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's gonna auto-die. Auto just realized I am not wearing my barbarian armor. Alright, I might not need it though, because I got my updraft here, so... I might just go ahead and plug him in the face. If I can find his face. That took a lot more arrows than it should have. Alright, so just like BOTW, you get plenty of things to catch on fire here. Alright folks, with that, it's time to go up into the snowy region. There's quite a bit over there that I want to scoop up on the way. And we're going to kind of make one big, like, counterclockwise loop on the Great Plateau here. Beware the dancing idiot. Because you can never quite have enough amber. <laughs> Alright, there are some loose lootables down there. Again, I'm not going to take the time to go get everything, but uh, I'm just kind of pointing stuff out as I go. Not like this is really necessary, but I always like to kill my ego when I come across them. They give you rupees and mighty bananas, so yeah, I always stop for duck crossing. Alright, so it turns out I was going to come down here anyway for my treasure chest. Alright, and guys, it's pretty low threat here. Just like in BOTW, you only need low level cold resistance. So, a ruby shield should do you just fine. But just in case that doesn't, you now have a spicy elixir. Alright, from here I'm actually going to go ahead and cross the river. It's always a good reliable spot to go for these elemental bats, especially at night. I don't typically upgrade the jumpsuit past, you know, set bonus just to get that claim stamina up. But, uh, you know, it, some folks might want to do that, so I think at some point I'll get some videos out on where to find all these elemental bats. Uh, the depths is always a good place to, you know, get your bats killed when you're down there. But beyond that, there's also, you know, certain hot spots where I tend to find these things anyway. Up here on the mainland. Can never have enough rock salt. Booyah. Snow boots sure would be nice right now. 
And guys, speaking of snow boots, that's coming real soon here. Garuda, Desert, I keep talking about it. Uh, pretty much here after the Great Plateau and after the challenge that's associated with this down in the depths where you have to, like, throw all those eyeballs down, you know, and awaken the Brethren statue. Yeah, as soon as that dude is awake, we are out of here and we are going to the desert. No touchy! <laughs> I was wondering if he was going to get himself with that blast radius. Alright, this Karak seed is a doozy. Oh yeah, don't have your ruby shield equipped for this. You might have to take a little bit of cold damage, but those things melt surprisingly fast. Alright, our good friend the Karak Seed, once he's done, go ahead top this little peak here. Now guys, another thing that you're going to notice that's very, very different here on the um, Great Plateau, you know, besides all the treasure and Karak Seeds and caves, is the Chasm. So in Breath of the Wild, all four of these Chasms used to be shrines. So if you can remember where the shrines were, you will find your four corresponding Chasms. And I'm about 99.99999% sure that there is absolutely nothing in either one of these. Yep, nothing here. You can actually make ice weapons with those, though. Go ahead and tip any weapon you want. Again, if you're going to have your ruby shield out, you know, that's going to just melt it. But otherwise, it's a good freezing weapon. Now, there's a Karak seed, like, right off the ledge here. So you already know I'm going to go for that bad boy. And turning on your Ultra Hand, you will find a stone. I wonder how many times I have dropped a rock on top of a croc's head. That's gotta be a trivia. Which gives me a really awesome idea for a new counter. We will call it the Croc Cruelty Counter. Alright guys, from here it's gonna be a bit of a hike. Next stop where the old man used to be atop Mount Hylia. Wow, that's cruel. They're showing me the Gerudo Tower literally from this vantage point. That's what you get. Alright, from here I'm going to fly back across the river. We got some more goodies. Nice of them to give you the bundles of wood again. Alright, this Karak Seed, guys, I am not going to lie, this one is not very fun. So what I like to do is take advantage of the wooden stuff that they give you over here. We're going to kind of build a bridge. It's not going to be a pretty bridge, but it's going to work. Alright. Once we got Mr. Karak seat out of the way... Go ahead and head on back over to your croc seed that we left behind. And this is just my personal preference. I'm a huge fan of the fan planes in this game. Now we might have to kill that like like first. Matter of fact, I'm already pretty confident we will. You can never have enough rock salt. All right, guys, once you got your two fur, we're going to go ahead and go cave diving. Now, this cave used to be here in BOTW, but it was a very different kind of cave back then. I don't know why I just went through all that trouble. Should be our bubble frog. The bloopy heard me coming from a mile away, but the like like, yeah. Yep. 
And in here we'll find Shrine 2 of 2. Okay, there's a treasure chest like right above my head here. I have to find an ascend spot. Alright, this one's going to be a bit tough to get. It's a bird flying around, so you have to kind of lead the shot a little bit. And more times than not, your treasure chest is not going to fall in a desirable spot. So I'll just kind of like soft mark this one right about here, because from this point you'll be able to hit it, you know, pretty much any from anywhere. Alright guys, from here we're going to proceed west this time. We're going to actually go over here to where the old man's house used to be. And actually, I think it's still called the old man's house, but he is no longer in it. It is now occupied by Yiga. There's this whole common theme going on here where the Great Plateau and in the depths right under us, it's all about the Yiga. Alright, so now there is a Karak seed like kind of out of the way. Right down here where I used to hop down and get some good, uh, good, bleh, get some gemstones. My tongue's getting tight in knots. Not technically on the Great Plateau, but close enough, I wanted to go ahead and knock it out. Oh, and it's a party as soon as you get up topside here. If you want to try to get a whole bunch of bobkins with one arrow, try the Chew Jelly, because it has a blast radius to it. And you see, I got quite a few frozen up there. Just that one shot. Boy, that perfect dodge makes a real big difference with those royal weapons. Call that my ring around the rosy maneuver. Durability number 1578. Ding! Hey, right, you still got a couple of rush rooms here. Kind of funny how they kept just enough left over from BOTW to just kind of make you feel like you want it again. Alright, with that, time to go visit the cabin. And speaking of Yiga, it actually kind of looks like a proper Yiga hideout right now. You got the wooden stakes, you got the lanterns. Alright, so I like to approach from this direction because you can get over the spiky things. Well, at least the first row of them. Hey, do you have a couple of stand mellow mushrooms right where they used to be? I'm gonna go ahead and pop on in the house here. Or try to at least. Alright guys, now that guy with the uh, tornado thrower. Try to get that updraft. When you get that updraft, it just makes life a whole lot easier here. Not only do you, you know, not have to worry about the... The uh, thing damaging you, but it also gives you a chance to just knock that dude out real quick. And here's our second piece of the Yiga outfit. You'll probably never see me equip that set ever. It'd be cool if it came with a set bonus, like drops more bananas when you kill something. All right, folks, so there is another Karak seed here. Right where the offering trays are. And you guessed it, mighty bananas. Alright, just to show you on the map where we wound up here. 
And folks, from here, there's not much really else in the area, so I'm going to go ahead and beeline it all the way over here. There should be another Karoxid around here. That'll get me close. There you are. You've probably been wondering this whole time why I've had a uh, stamp, or not a stamp, but a pin over here. I'm about to show you. Okay, and while I'm in the mood of pinning things, there's another Karak seed there. And this one actually starts down there, but we gotta get them up here, so once again that'll be fan plane. There'll be another chest up there. And another Karak seed right about there. That'll get us going for a bit. Kinda funny, there's still an explodable wall here. And I just can't help myself, so it's getting blown up anyway. But there's another Chasm. Huh, I just realized I think I can speed up the process. Noise. Okay, and I'm going with a three fan design, because these planes just don't have the lift otherwise. And we got a long way to go to get them up there. And I never use these batteries for anything else, so I might as well go ahead and, you know, save myself from having to eat charges. Alright, he started right about there, ended right about there. And there's a treasure chest here, as promised. Alright, I'm gonna head back over for our Karoxy, and I'm pretty sure I just flew right over that tree with my fan plane. I half contemplated getting that Karak, you know, while I was flying around I was gonna land, but I wasn't sure if that was gonna reset the one that I was flying. And I really didn't feel like going all the way back down there and starting over. Oh, that was an epic waste of a perfect dodge. Kind of fun knocking a shell off that way, though, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, now before I actually get up into the castle, I'm gonna hit this Karoxid real quick. It's kind of on the way, but then kind of not because he doesn't, like, go the direction we need to. But he doesn't go terribly far out of the way either. Bullseye. All right, now to the castle. And guys, there are a couple of lootables there, and almost right where they used to be. There's another chest in the steeple, which is kind of cool. Uh, there's a croc up top of the steeple, again, which is kind of cool. Oh, there's a chest in here, I'm pretty sure. Yippers. Good old Temple of Time, baby. There's our goddess statue. Now, guys, that has a very different function here uh, than it used to, so that's going to be a completely separate video. Really, I just kind of wanted to break up the, the Great Plateau, the looting side of things, and then, of course, the Great Plateau challenge side of things. All right, guys, we do have a Karak seed here, but I don't think we can actually shoot it from here, so you're going to have to send up there to get after it. Kind of nice, we really don't have to climb the Temple of Time this time. Look at that. Hit it perfect. Nostalgic fabric. <laughs> right where he used to be. Alright folks, so one more Karak seed here to wrap things up on the Great Plateau. I definitely hope that helped you all out. 
And as always, until the next time, best of luck and happy hunting. Tulin took away my ability to put the rock back down on the croc's head there. You took away my choices, man. That's better. And it is finally great. It is finally... Welcome back. Or you could... Yes, that is a Karak seed at the front of my ship. They were out of mermaids. For this one, you're deafening. I'm always wondering if he's ever gonna, like, hop off the ledge. He never does. That is not a sim. Did he really have to scatter the amber across the entire field of battle? I really don't think I need them, but you know, they're shiny. With that, let's go. This is me. Not getting every little thing. But they're semi-shiny rocks and they're gonna get melted. We will call it the Karak Cruelty Calendar. Calendar. We were, yeah. From here, it's gonna be a bit, from a distance, I thought that was seaweed there for a second. I wonder if the crocs get cold. Are you a witch? So probably not. Alright folks, one more croc seed here. Oops. And this really reminds me of the Yiga can. And that really rub Jeez, I can't talk. These things are so powerful for sneak striking. It's probably... Yeah, scratch that. Wrong weapon. Or you can gently di... This is... Excuse me. Tick up... Excuse me, it's hiccup... <laughs> Excuse me, hiccup o'clock. This is probably... Hence the re... Hence the reason... Jeez.